Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at statistics with R. This is a presentation for actuarial students who are studying R. This corresponds to the CS1B curriculum and it comprises Introduction to R Programming, Fundamentals of Statistical Analysis and Probability Distributions and that's what we're going to be looking at here. This is question three and it features probability distributions and this one will require a bit of prior knowledge about probability distributions the, the probability mass functions, probability distribution functions, correction factors, and so forth. Okay, so I, I'm assuming you have that. It's just it takes too long if I have to explain everything. So this is exam is on the basis of base R. So it actually would only you'd only be required to answer the questions true base R, on, and not use any other R packages unless directed to in the question. Okay, so that's why there's no tidyverse or ggplot that much. Okay, an insurer's marketing team has developed a new lottery that gives each new customer the chance to win a cash prize. The insurer states that any new customer can win the pro with probability of 0 0.36 independently of all the other customers. Now, just as a quick remark, they can win a cash prize. It doesn't really matter how much. It's really a yes or no question, a binary question. Do they win a cash prize? Yes or no? The probability of yes that they do win a cash prize is 0 0.36. Let Y denote the number of winners in a random sample of 900 new customers. Okay, so we're dealing with 900 new customers and there's a probability of 0 0.36 that each of those customers can win a cash prize. So that is very straightforward telling us that this is the first question here state a suitable distribution for the random variable y clearly that is a binomial distribution with sample size number of independent trials 900 and a probability of success 0 0.36 so we save n as 900 and we save 0 0.36 as p okay so they're in memory and we can use use them from now on and call on them from now on Okay, calculate the four decimal places, the probabilities of probability of k less than or equal to y, less than or equal to, less than y, less than or equal to k plus 20 for all values. k equals 200, 220, 240, all the way up to 400. So this is an interval probability, okay? This is the probability of being within a certain range of successes, Okay. So this will correspond in the first instance to the probability of being greater than 220 and less than or equal to 240. Okay, so that's the upper and lower bound of the first interval. That's the upper and lower bound of the second interval and so on. And that's the uh, upper bound of the last one. Actually, I think there's a bit of a trick to this that we could go to 420. Anyway, we'll worry about that later on. So... It is suggested that the true distribution of y can be approximated with a normal distribution. Tell you what, we'll leave question three. We'll come back to question three and just look at question two right now. Okay. So first off, what we have to do is set up our range of values there. Okay. These are the quantiles that we're going to apply to p binome. This is the cumulative distribution function. Okay. And these are the quantiles, essentially numbers that give uh, correspond to a certain probability when we uh, look for the cumulative distribution function okay so uh, that's one way of setting up that series of numbers there's other ways of doing it as well but anyway you can try them out um, we have 420 here as well now there's sort of sort of reason for that I uh, anyway yeah so just to sort of like um, a bit a bit, bit of clean, uh, cleanliness it makes something um it, it makes the graphs easier to work with later on okay so that's just an informed decision to go to 420 there but it's not that important we have our main range of values there 220 240 that just helps us out later on in the small thing so it's not that important okay so the cumulative distribution function of the binomial is that's what we're calling that cdfb is p binome okay q which is these numbers up here the quantiles and n and p which we have stored previously which is 900 and 0 0.36 okay so these correspond to numbers that we have saved already like here okay 
Now, just to make that easier to look at, what we can do is go round CDFB, four decimal places, and that's what we have there. This is the probability of being less than or equal to 220. This is the probability of being less than, less than or equal to 240, less than or equal to 260, and so on. 280, 300, 320, and 340. Now, 320 and 340 are the main sort of intervals. The 300 to 320 and the 320 to 340 are the main intervals in terms of the probability of where the Y is going to lie. So 300 to 340, pretty strong chance is going to be in that range of values. Okay. Now, how do we test that? How do, can we determine that? Well, we get the differences, the sequential differences, and just apply it to what we've created there before, CDFB, okay? And that's the probability of the interval. So that's an interval probability for the binomial, so PB there. And just round that to four decimal places, that is less than or equal to 200, less than or equal, between 200 and 240, 240 to 260, 260 to 280, um, so I think I missed one there. Sorry, that's 220 to 240. I apologize. That's the 300 to 321, and that's the 320 to 341. Okay, I was out of step there. That's 220 to 240 there. So that's one approach, and that's actually that's the probability of being within each interval. Now I could just try it out there. You can actually just sort of test that out yourself. Um, this is an alternative approach. There's multiple approaches here. This sort of question really requires you to get like interact a lot with it and just break it up and so on. This is an alternative approach. So this one requires you to do do it yourself. So just to see how it works, just type in CDFB minus one. So it's CDFB minus the first item, and this is CDFB minus eleven, which is CDFB minus the last item. Okay. And if you get the difference between the two, it corresponds to what we have above there. Okay? So it's a diff different approach. And I invite you to try it out because it's sort of handy to practice with this stuff. Particularly as you sort of see why you go up to 420. How it makes things easier to work with later on. Okay? Another approach again. We can go a sequence here. Of 220 to 240. And... You know, just work it out there. So this will start off at K. That that will give us 220, 240, and so on. Uh, when we have K as 220, this will be 240 here. K plus 20 is 240. That is cumulative distribution function of 240 minus the cumulative distribution function 220. And it gives the same values as below. Okay. There's a lot going on there, and I recognize that, but it's well worth actually practicing all these different approaches just to sort of see, you know, you develop a guile for R programming like that. Now, so, that's the f that one done. It is suggested that the true distribution of Y can be approximated with a normal distribution with expectation mu essentially 324 and a standard deviation of 14.4 calculate to four decimal places the probability of the intervals for all values k from 220 to 240 based on the suggested normal distribution okay so uh sorry this should be exercise three but anyway we'll, we'll persevere okay now we have q already stored in memory okay that's 220 240 280 260, 280, and so on, okay? The mean and standard deviation of the normal distribution are to be specified. So this is the cumulative distribution function of the normal distribution, and we need these arguments there, these inputs, to actually clarify what we need. So P, the P norm will just give us the uh, cumulative distribution functions for each of those values. And if we apply the difference there, that gives us the interval probabilities. So that's the interval probabilities according to the normal distribution. Okay? When we approximate the binomial distribution with the normal distribution, that's what we get. And you can sort of see that they're fairly close. 0 0.32, uh, 3428 and 0 0.4761. 
that's not too far from these here these numbers here so it's not too bad um now something you probably will learn as part of your studies as an actuarial scientist is correction factors continuity corrections actually i should say so i'm not going to sort of go into what they are here but essentially for approximating certain intervals of the binomial distribution when you approximate those intervals with the normal distribution what the correct thing to do is add in a correction factor which is either depending on the situation is adding one half or subtracting one half to the the upper and lower bounds essentially okay so this is the upper bound the first upper bound corresponds to 240 so we adjust that to, when we apply a continuity correction we adjust that to 200 uh, 240.5 so just add it 0.5 and likewise 220 that's the lower bound of the first interval we adjust that to 220.5 okay so that's the continuity correction so in some when we apply it when we're approximating a discrete distribution with the normal distribution we apply this continuity correction it takes a while to get the hang of it so it's you know don't, don't worry about it too much yet it's not it's not an r question it's a general statistics question so anyway but anyway so that gives us the probabilities again this is what we get if we apply the continuity correction 0 0.3526 and 0 0.4701 very good very good that's the binomial and that's the normal approximation of it okay let's just actually see how the good they are here for the other ones 0 0.0496 and 0 0.1202 that's the binomial and the approximation is 0 0.051 and 0 0.1203 that's very good okay now plot both sets of probabilities on the same graph okay so um q minus one essentially we're just uh, chopping off the q minus one basically just sake, sake of space there's nothing really here that's all again it's just sort of you know uh the sake of simplicity we'll just chop off the first one and probably the last one if you want as well okay that's just um sake of saving some space so that will start us off at 240 rather than 220 okay um also these have to have the same length okay so this is an item this has 10 items this has 10 items okay so that is important as well so just actually check what they are just sort of see what q is q minus one is and just sort of see how the first item of this which is 240 compares to the first item of this which is the probability from 240 to 220 to 240 okay Sl we're slightly fudging things a bit now to be honest with you but there's no good way of you know a a perfecting it so just from our from what we're doing so it's a slight fudge there in that we're sort of slightly putting something to one side but anyway it, it it's good enough that's what i'm saying okay uh type p so these are some additional things we can do to make our plot easier to look at so i'm going to put down the points first type p equal point x lab equals k y lab equals probability these are the labels uh color equals black just to make it black points uh black characters and pch is 16 that's the point character uh so small black circles will show for the binomial distribution and for the normal approximation we're going to put in a green line uh so here we're putting in pn rather than pb okay where the line is going to be green and it's going to have width two so that's what it looks like there okay now just as a quick remark i know it's not a perfect graph but it's just good enough for what we need right now uh 220 240 to 420 so you 
you can adjust the upper and lower bounds a bit okay I knocked off the 220 there just to make center it okay that's what the Q minus one was about but actually I could actually have knocked off the last one as well but it's sort of centered there and that's the way I like it so we're just going to go along with that you could try that out practice a little bit with this bit of code here if you want okay uh, but I like that now I'm happy enough with that so that's my uh, graph okay and you see that the green lines do match up with the points fairly well now they're actually the, if we were to push comes to shove we might be able to find if we were zoom in in them find small discrepancies but you know it's pretty good now uh comment on this the central limit theorem is that the plot shows that the suggested normal distribution that should, should be single n it is a very good approximation to the binomial distribution and the reason is that the central limit theorem it, that this is the central limit theorem the binomial distribution is approximation of the sum of n independent variables where n and the n is a very large number there 900 the approximation works because of large sample size and the parameters have been chosen to match the first two moments of the normal distribution and the so essentially there's a match up there that we've created the expected value of y which we picked uh, uh from the for the our values from the normal distribution that actually comes because the 324 that's 900 times 0 0.36 you probably might have guessed that why we went with that 0 point uh, 324 and 14.4 and it's because it's the binomial expectation and the binomial standard deviation. Okay. All right. Okay. So I should be clear that is that squared. Actually, that should be uh, fourteen point four squared. Okay. Anyway, we'll leave it at that.